And so as we look at this message that we've been started last week, and I want to continue with today, just this, this, this getting our, our thinking different that we're not planning for Easter, but we're, we're planning to live for Jesus every day of our life. That we're not planning for a special day or even a holy day. We're planning to live every day like we believe Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Amen? And get this stirred up on the inside of us. Where Jesus himself said, and, and, and you can just remember this or just review for just a moment from last week. Just remember in John eleven twenty two 22, or excuse me, 25, Jesus himself said to her, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. Can I get a hallelujah, praise the Lord, amen out of that one. There's, he is, the, remember, he declared, I am the resurrection before he was resurrected. He declared who he was and that, that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me as Savior will live even if he dies. You know, we've shared in these situations, and even with Kathy's friend here, death is a part of this life. You know, it's something that we have to face. We don't like it. We don't like to let go of those. We don't, we don't like the injustice of some of the tragedies that have happened in our school systems, in our veterans' home. And, and, and then we start to look worldwide and some of the terrible things that have happened. We don't like those experiences. But folks, that's why we need to prepare people. The best way to prepare for death is to know the life, to know the resurrected one in our lives. And not just for us to be ready, but to help to share with the world around us of the importance and, and, and the effects of the resurrection. Do I believe personally in the resurrection? And everyone in the church would say, Amen. do I live like I believe in the resurrection? And everybody's really quiet. Do I live like I believe in the resurrection? Paul said there in Romans, he said that, that we now, since we not only were baptized into his death, but also into his resurrection power, that we should now habitually live in newness of life. The potential that we have right now to start to live habitually in this newness of life, new way of living, this new life that he has given to us, that we are united with the resurrected one, not just when I die that I get, get to go to heaven, but right now I start to experience that tremendous power in my life. But I want you to know, and I want to talk for just a few moments today about death. Didn't get any amens out of that. Does this not affect people in this room? We all, have, all, all, all of us will experience either death unless Jesus comes back. We've got people, family, friends, sometimes it's expected, unexpected. This is something that we need to talk a little bit because when we understand the resurrection, it changes our perspective. Our perspective. Zach's my son, and he got those things from me. So, so I'm, I'm sorry, but there's some traits that I pass down. But, but, but if I believe in the resurrection, then it should change the way I live my life. So today, even though I want to talk a little bit and focus on the power of the resurrection to affect us after we die, really that knowledge affects the way we live. It affects the way we live our daily life. You can turn your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, the Apostle Paul writing here in 1 Thessalonians 4. As you're turning there, um, probably most of you have heard over the last couple of weeks since the death of, of Billy Graham, some of his um, quotes that he had made, one of the ones that they keep sharing, I think they even made it a billboard or whatever, where Billy Graham wrote this, he said, someday you will hear or read that Billy Graham is dead, don't you believe a word of it, I shall be more alive than I am now, I will just have changed my address, I will have gone into the presence of God said, I'll just have changed my address. You know, recently, Marilyn and I, we changed our address. We're, we're still alive. We're still together. We're still living. We're just living somewhere different than we were. And if we start to understand that, we start to see that, that as we're Christ followers and, 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 and we believe in the power of the resurrection, that it changes the, the way that we live our daily life. That we have all experienced people that have, have made a change of, of address. 
and that have lived this life and, and are in heaven. And thank God for, for that because this life is really short compared to eternity. You understand that, that, that this life is just a speck compared to eternity. And, and we're thankful for heaven. How many of you are thankful for heaven? That, that, that we've got a place that we can go to that he has prepared for us. And, that it, and, and, and it's a place that is better than this life. Paul said, for me to live is Christ, but to die, that's better yet for me. It would have been good just if he would have said it, it's good for me, but, but going to heaven is a better place. It's a, a glorious place where there's no sickness, there's no disease, there's no death, there's no devils, there's no problems. It's glorious because Jesus reigns as Lord there. And it's a wonderful place, this place called heaven, that we get to spend eternity. It would have been good if God would have given us uh, 70 or 80 years in heaven and eternity on this life. That would have been good, but he turned it around and he said, you get to live here for a few years, but you get to live in heaven and in my presence and perfection for eternity. That's amazing. That's a good God, I'm telling you. The resurrection is what makes that all possible for us. Now, Paul writing to the church here in 1 Thessalonians because there was a group of people that they were, they were concerned because they were expecting the rapture to happen just any moment. That's a, good, that's a good church atmosphere to have, I want you to know real quickly. It changes the way you make decisions and live your life also. But the church had expected that the rapture was just going to happen any moment, that Jesus would return and there would be a, a catching away of the saints and they would be in, in heaven and they were expecting it to happen. But what was going on is as they were living, there was a few people that were dying in the church and they were concerned, what's going to happen to these people that have died? So Paul writes to them here in 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And I'm going to start reading in verse 12. If your Bible is kind of broken up in, in sections or whatever, it might seem a little odd. But I want to start in verse 12, if you would, please. We're talking about living our life out of the effects of the resurrection. Do I live like I believe in the resurrection? Verse 12, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. So that you may walk properly before outsiders. He's, he's emphasizing here not just that we get to go to heaven, but the effects of the resurrection, the effects of eternity in our life should cause us to be a witness to the outsiders. Who are the outsiders? People outside of, of the kingdom of God, pe people that we are witnessing to. Walking properly, people should see in our lifestyle the effects of the resurrection. So he says, so that you may walk properly before outsiders and be dependent on no one. But we do not want you to be misinformed, brothers, about those who are asleep or those that have died. Is it, asleep here is just a nice biblical word for those that are, they have passed from this life. Asleep that you may not grieve as others do. Note real quickly here, it doesn't say that we don't grieve. It doesn't say that we don't miss them. Like Kathy said, I'm not ready to let go of that person yet. There's, a, there's, there's some grieving that goes on. We miss them, but not like the world because the world has no hope after this life. The world doesn't know where they go to heaven or do they go to hell. Is there a heaven or is there a hell? They were a nice person. Does that get them into heaven? Does St. Peter have a list up there? And if, it, you know, if your name didn't make the list, you know, uh, is it one of those kind of like in, in school where it's like kind of you're graded on a curve and maybe you didn't make it, you know, and there was enough people that were just a little bit better than you that, man, you know, if you would have just helped that one person across the street when you're a Boy Scout, you would have made it, but you didn't have quite enough good work. The, the world's hopeless. Which religion's right? Is it, is it do, we, do we go off into a sleep somewhere? Do we get reincarnated and come back as a cockroach? Or, you know, what, what, is, what, is, what, is, what happens? The world grieves because they have no knowledge. Or maybe they're involved in another religion that brings more that confusion into their lives. He said, we don't grieve like the world does, who have no hope. Please underline that if you don't have it in your Bible. The world has no hope. The world has no hope after this life. You don't get a second chance. You don't get to come back and try it again. You, do, you, you don't get people to get you out of hell in some form or fashion. Jesus is the only one that can get you to avoid hell. See, the world has no hope and that's why they grieve so much. For since we believe that Jesus died 
and rose again. Changes everything. This sentence changes everything. Not that we just believe that Jesus died. Not just that we believe Jesus died on the cross for our sins. But we believe he rose again. You can't take that little doctrine out of the Bible. Because that was what makes everything come alive to us. That Jesus rose from the dead. Folks, we got to be excited about this truth right here. Because it wasn't just that Jesus was raised from the dead. We were raised together with him. That's what gives us hope. Because that Jesus died and rose again, even so, uh, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord. Paul, there would be times when Paul would simply, he would be talking and, and teaching and writing, and he would simply say, things about, well, this is what I would say. This is my perspective, perspective. This is what I think is good counsel. But there's times like this where Paul would say, this I'm saying by the authority of Jesus. Hey, hey, listen up to this, folks. All of his writing was inspired, but there's times where Paul will really bring attention and, and simply say, this is the word of the Lord. And it really brings us, remember when Paul's first writing this, he doesn't, they didn't get it in a nice leather bound thing that says Holy Bible on the outside of it. It was a letter that was sent to them and they would receive this letter from Paul and as they would read through this letter and then they came to this point where he said, I say this by the authority of the Lord, it would really bring significance to what he's saying here. This I say, the word that I declare from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord. He can't come if he's dead, but he's alive. Amen? The coming of the Lord. Put your pause button here for just a moment. We'll come back to this. How does the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ affect your daily life? When was the last time you paused and you thought, I wonder if today's the day Jesus is going to come? Changes how you deal with all that strife, all that stress, all those decisions. Now, that doesn't mean that we just let everything go. We just don't let those things have control over our lives. If Jesus came back today... Who cares what you didn't get done at the house before you come? Did you get the laundry folded before you came? If Jesus comes, that dryer is going to be full. Whoever goes over there and breaks into our house to, to steal our canned goods during the Depression time here or whatever, they're going to find clothes. That and they're all going to say, Dennis and Marilyn did not keep a good house because they're still clothes. No, folks, those things don't matter. Some of those things we have to do, but are we keeping the awareness of the resurrected one that is returning to catch those away that are looking for his return. That revival uh, video that Art had me watch recently on, on um, Asbury Carroll College out there, the revival that broke out, one chapel service where one person came forward and, and repented at the altar and the thing broke out for seven days. They had chapel 24 hours a day for seven days. At a, at, this was, at a, at, this was a, at, a, at a Christian college. One of the students said, after chapel should have been out, I looked out over the campus and no one was out there. And he said, I thought, I wonder if the rapture happened. And I missed it. Why is it then in those situations we stop and think, I, I wonder if the rapture happened and I missed it. Why is our thinking not, rapture couldn't have happened because... I know I can't miss it. Huh? Why is it that we think we could miss it? How could, how could that possibly be that you would miss the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ? If we're walking in awareness of the presence of the Lord, if we are, are convinced in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, if we believe he is the resurrected one and has something for us to be doing right here in our life, folks, when he comes back, he's going to find us 
doing, the Bible says, actively engaged in his business. I'm not going to be wandering around and, and just start to get, you know, kind of just at the last minute, oh yeah, I forgot Dennis, you know, grab him too. No, we, we are caught up in a twinkling of an eye. We're ready for his coming. You see, the resurrection and the power of the resurrection transforms the way I live my life because I'm expecting the resurrected one to return someday. And he's going to catch us. You know the old saying, what we should do is we should catch people doing the right thing and tell them about it. Too often we live in a mentality where I'm looking to catch somebody doing the wrong thing. I'm going to nail them bad. I'm going to nail them. It's for their own good. You understand that. Although I'm going to feel good doing it, but I'm going to nail them. I'm going to watch them until I see them do something wrong. That's not the spirit of God flowing through us. We should look for people and say, you know what, Tony, you did the right thing. Not just going down there and praying for that person. You snagged JC with you and went down there and prayed over that person. Good job. Thank you for going and doing that. We should be looking for people and finding them doing the right thing, you know? Keith, thanks for being up here playing in, in the worship team today. I appreciate that and things that you're doing. Folks, we need to find people doing the right thing and then keep on encouraging them. Why is it? Because we all need to be doing more and there's enough discouragement around us, but when we're, when we're following after the resurrected one, we're all going to be ready for his... Folks, I, it's not just that I want to go to heaven. I want to see you there too. Huh? Amen. Huh? I want to see Amen. you too. Yeah. I want to, I'm going to see you. You know, one of the things I often do, and, and I know I'm a little off from my message here, but, you know, some of you guys have gone with me before. Oftentimes, the way I close a service when I'm in one of the other countries, I say at the very end, stop for just a moment. Everybody look at me. Everybody look at me. When I get to heaven, I want to see your face. I want to see your face. And it's amazing how at the end of a service, no matter what language we've been preaching and what culture, what nation we're in, believers put a smile. That's right. There's a place called heaven for eternity. And I want all of us to be there at that place. When we're aware of the resurrection, it reminds us that Jesus has defeated the enemy. It reminds us we have a purpose here on this earth that his resurrection power wants to work through. And there is a heaven that we're all going to be for eternity. Okay, un unclick the pause button. Here we go. And so he says, uh, at the coming of the Lord, we'll not precede those which have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven, hallelujah, with a cry uh, of command and the voice of the archangel and with the sound of the trumpet and the dead in Christ, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Over and over, the apostle Paul talks about in Christ. Those when we're living, in, we're in Christ. Next week, we'll look at that a little bit more. But even when we die, we're still in Christ. We're still connected with the resurrected one. And when we're in Christ, even though we, our bodies are dead, we're still alive. Like Billy Graham said, I'm going to be more alive than ever. Could it be that those returning with Jesus, the saints that are coming back with him, are more alive now than we are that are alive on this earth? They're more alive. They're more aware of life, not just breathing, not just feeling, not it's a cold day, not just whether the temperature of the room, but they're more alive. They've, they've, they've come to a fuller revelation and experience of Jesus, the resurrection, and the life. And when they return, they are more alive really than those of us that are here on this earth. So this resurrection power is the, the Jesus' is one returning, the resurrected one coming back to catch us away. And when we are alive and are left, we're caught up. That's, that, that's where we get the rapture, caught up, snatched away, that we are caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so will we always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Folks, these are things that should encourage us. These are things that should stir us, that when we're living this daily life, the way we face death, the way we face struggles, the way we're, we're waiting for the coming of Christ, we should encourage each other that Jesus is coming again. It changes our perspective on the way that we deal with just natural things. Look at this as we just break it down for just a few moments and, and, and see the effects, because we said... The resurrection should affect our daily living. How does it do? First of all, the resurrection. 
The resurrection transforms the way we view death. The resurrection transforms the way we view death. Death no longer is the end. Death no longer is, is, is a hopeless situation. Death no longer is a mystery to us. Jesus defeated death, hell, and the grave. Isn't that good news in our lives? Jesus has already done it. Got my little thing going on. You probably all think I've got a ribbon ministry going up here, but it just, it just fell out here. That Jesus has defeated death for us. Death is a reality. Death is something that our bodies will have to deal with, but, but the resurrected one lives on the inside of us. And so we get resurrected power come through us. And when we're resurrected, we get bodies just like Jesus. Isn't that incredible? Remember that Jesus is the only one at this point that has a resurrected body. All that have died in Christ, they, they are, their spirits have gone to heaven, but their bodies are still here on this earth. But there will be a day that those bodies will be resurrected also, like Jesus' body is now. How is that? Isn't it interesting that they, in a sense, they, they seen Jesus, they seen him in a bodily form? Remember, he was able to walk through the walls and yet was able to sit down with them and to be able to eat food. It's incredible what kind of, of, of mysterious thing that is to us on this side of death. But Jesus has a resurrected body and we get resurrected bodies someday. You know, sometimes we, we get thinking selfish. Well, when I get to heaven, you know, Pastor Will, I have, you know, maybe more hair here and, and maybe, maybe less hair back here or, or, you know, maybe will I be slimmer? Will I look better, you know? Folks, I want you to know that in this world, we get so consumed with our looks. But when we get to heaven, we just get to look on him and we don't care necessarily how, what all this looks like. It's going to be redeemed in some ways. I don't know whether there's still going to be redheads and blondes and brunettes and whether you can change it every day or not. I don't know. It, that really doesn't matter because we're going to be in the presence of Jesus. We're going to be in the presence of Jesus and we're not going to be so consumed with this thing. We're going to understand it's just a vessel that we have to be able to use, to get around. It's incredible. We still have bodies, resurrected bodies in that day. Are we just going to be spirits that just kind of float in and out? Are we just going to be little whiffs of, of clouds that kind of come and go? Or are we just going to be whispers in the corners of the temple of heaven? I don't know everything about it, but we have a few things that we've revealed. And so death, death no longer is a mystery to us. We no longer are people without hope. We just change our address. Paul said, for me... To live is Christ, but to die is gain. To be, to be absent from the body is to be. Let's say that with a smile. Present with the Lord. Paul, who had had a revelation, a vision. Some even believe that he was actually taken to heaven for a time. He, he was talking about, man, I long to go there. I long to go there. I long to go back and to see that experience. Folks, if the Apostle Paul who had been there and came back longed to go there and he was the one that was saying, how much better for me to go and to be there? It, folks, it must be an incredible place. I'm not going to try to, to, uh, to tell you what I think it all is about, but the Bible has some good things to say about it. And more than anything, it, we can just know it's a far better place because Jesus is manifested and is thrown in his glory there. So I view, I view death differently. First of all, I view death as an enemy that Jesus has defeated. I'll never forget, I was a teenager, well, no, I was, I, was, you know, I can't remember how, I was, I was young at the time, I'll just say that. No, I'll say I was younger, uh, since Zach tells me I'm on the other side of the younger people. But anyway, uh, I'll never forget my, uh, my grandmother, uh, Thomas. Alice, um, my other grandma on my mom's side there, she passed away when I was in sixth grade, so I didn't get as much time with her, but, but, but you know, everyone has their favorite, and I just happen to be everyone's favorite, but, but, uh, but I spent a lot of, a lot more time than most of the grandkids with, with my grandma Thomas, and, 
and she was a great cook and, and, and just in, enjoyed. I would, she lived right beside the high school, and so after school, lots of times I'd go over, see Grandma. Maybe if it had open campus, I could run over and see Grandma. Then I remember the day that I went over, and Grandma had had a stroke, and I knew something wasn't right, but I didn't, I'd, I'd never been around somebody who had a stroke. I didn't know what this all was about, and then, then Grandma's health deteriorated, and then she, she had cancer, and and those last couple days that I would go see her in, in the nursing home where she was basically just, just dying and um, really couldn't communicate with her. But I can remember how her body would fight for that next breath. Even when she was in so much um, discomfort and, and no, there was no natural hope for, for grandma at that time and her age and, and just the problems, but her body still fighting that next breath. And even at a young age, you realize death is, is an enemy. Death is, is an enemy. And Jesus defeated death for us. In the sense, we no longer fear death. It has, because the fear of death almost is more powerful than death itself. The fear of Oh my goodness, I almost died. Oh, 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 for days. Oh my gosh, I almost died in this situation. You could have died doing that. Oh my goodness. Instead of living out of, praise God, I didn't die. We live out of the fear of death. So often. And so that fear has been broken over our lives. I, you know, Marilyn, I joke oftentimes, you know, if I don't see you again, see you there, you know. He's like, no, you don't get to go. If, if I got to stay here, you got to stay here, you know. Uh, death is, is, is not something to fear when we leave this life. It's a, we get to be in the presence of the Lord immediately. And so we can see, first of all, Paul's telling the church here, the, the believers, don't fear death. We, we have great hope. God's going to take care of us here and, and after this world. That, that we know that it's just a change of address for our spirit man on the inside. We can see the resurrection transforms the way that we emotionally mourn. That we deal with, with those that, loved ones that have died. Has anybody in this room had a loved one or a really good friend that has had a change of address? That has died from this? There's three of us. My goodness, you people are amazing. Um, long living friends or not any at all one of the true I don't know we've all had people family member friends that have left this earth and Paul says don't mourn like the world get a hold of your emotions folks otherwise that 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 over sense of grieving was starting to affect their believing their, their extreme grieving was starting to affect their believing. These people are lost. They've died. Now what? We're in a hopeless situation. And they were, were spending more time grieving the loss of a loved one than remembering in the reunion of that loved one when Jesus returns. And, and I want you to know that many of us have had friends and family that have, have died sometimes unexpectedly, sometimes way too early. And, and, and that's a part of mourning. There's nothing wrong with that. Just don't mourn like the world who doesn't have any hope. Mourn like those of us that believe that there is a resurrection, that there is a returning Lord Jesus Christ, and he's not coming. Isn't it incredible that you stop and think about this? Jesus could have just said, someday I'll come back and get you and take you to heaven. But he's saying, I'm going to bring everybody with you, with me. It's going to be the greatest party you've ever experienced in your whole entire life. Now, I don't mean that disrespectful. He's just saying, I don't want anybody to miss out on this. I'm going to bring everybody with me to come back and to get everyone on this earth that's ready so that we can all be together immediately at that moment. It's not just that I want you to experience me, the Lord Jesus Christ. I want my body, every single person, every single person to be a part of this day. I'm looking forward to it so much, he's saying, that I don't want anybody to left out. I'm grabbing heaven and earth heaven and earth and bringing them all together at that day. Isn't it incredible how much he loves us? How much do we care? And pastor, what's it going to be like? Am I going to see my, my brother, my sister, my family members, my friends? Am I going to know who they are at all that moment? Yeah, I believe we're going to know who they are. But folks, I also 
believe there's going to be such a quick, amazing awareness of Jesus. And I don't know how to articulate this, but everyone that we're going to know is going to like, we're going to know them through Jesus. The connection is not my aunt or my grandma Alice. The connection is through Jesus I know that person. When you look at me, you don't say, well, there's Dennis's hand. Well, look, there's another one. Uh, you don't, hey, right and left, how you don't? No, they're, they're Dennis's hands. We are his body of which he is the head of. And, and we will know each other, whether it's here or whether it's there, through the Lord Jesus Christ. You remember those the Pharisees or Sadducees, or those that probably wouldn't see, but anyway, they came up to Jesus and they said, hey, we got a mystery for you. There was a gentleman who died, who was married. He died, passed his wife on, which was traditional at that time, um, and, and, uh, and then he died, and, and it was seven brothers that had passed this, this poor woman along down the road until, until finally she died. Hey, hey, in the resurrection, whose wife will she be? They thought, well, we really got him here. And Jesus said, you are mistaken because you don't understand this thing. In the, in the resurrection, there is neither marriage nor giving in marriage. Now, I know that that's a, it's a little bit of a downer for Marilyn, but, but, it, <laughs> but this, is, this is what he's saying. When we get to heaven, it's not about me and my, it's about Jesus and his. It's hard for us to understand. It's hard for us to comprehend. The connection is all through Jesus. What if we started living that way here in the now? That I look at you and you look at me, not as Pastor Dennis or, or just a man, but that we see each other as part of the body of Christ. That we, as Paul said, we don't look at people anymore just at how they are, but we see them through Jesus. And our connections with one another. How does that start to change the way I live my daily life? The way I treat one another. I was just talking with someone earlier this morning. Just how blessed we are to have a church where we get along. That there's harmony here. There's not perfection. You know, don't misunderstand me. I'm just glad we don't have a, any big issues that we've taken sides on. And writing letters about and doing what we see each other through the blood of Jesus. Will, will you see me that way? Because if you see me in the natural, I got some, I got some real hang-ups, folks. Well, uh, little ones. Wait till next week. They'll be big ones. But, but I, I, I'm just saying I'm human. I'm, there's a natural part of me. If you see the natural part of me, that's all you see is, is the natural part of me. I'm going to really disappoint you. But if you'll see me through my connection with Jesus... You can receive some incredible things through me that I didn't even intend to say or do. You'll be able to learn. You'll be able to see. God will be able to speak through me more effectively if you'll see me not just as a man, but if you'll see me as a pastor, as part of what God's called me to be and to do in your life. If I see you in this form, in this way, as part of the body of Christ, this oneness, I don't look to you and say, oh, it's a low attendance day. Man, I must not be very good. I'm getting depressed and discouraged. Church isn't growing. More people aren't here. You know, what, what's going to happen at my birthday? Fewer cards. I get depressed on myself. No, no. We see one another through the eyes of Jesus. It's totally different. Paul said that how we view the emotional stress of death changes the way we view one another and how we love and live in this life and in the life to come. And the third thing, the Apostle Paul says that, that the resurrection transforms. I love this every time. Transforms. It transforms the way we view death. It transforms the emotional mourning process in our life, but also the resurrection transforms the way that we live our daily life. 
an expectation of the return of our Lord Jesus Christ? Am I living like I am expecting Jesus to return? Am I living with, with an ear to heaven, expecting the return of Jesus Christ anytime? Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. Um, went way over here today. Um, uh, you gotta, gotta shut me down, throw something at me or whatever, but um, are, we, are we living like we believe in the return of the Lord Jesus Christ? Father God, we thank you for your presence. Lord, the words that you have spoken over our life today, may it stir faith in us. May we just be consumed with the, the privilege of knowing you, experiencing you, and being transformed by you in our life. Thank you for this, this church. Lord, there's more that we know and we're asking more of what you want to accomplish and do here. Lord, let your will prevail. Let your grace be seen. And may the resurrected one Resurrect your will and your gifts in this place for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.